Hi everyone, my name is Hannah and I'm officially a private pilot now. I took my check ride about two weeks ago and I passed. And so since the information is still pretty fresh in my brain, I thought I would make a video talking about uh, the oral exam. Um, I won't go into the practical test, so the flight portion, uh, unless anybody wants me to. So let me know if you want me to talk about it in another video. But for now, um, I'm just going to be going over the oral exam. So I'm going to talk about uh, what I studied, uh, how I studied, uh, materials that I studied with, things I brought to the oral exam, the overall experience of the oral exam, um, and then things that I didn't really do that well on uh, during the oral exam, as well as things that I did great on. So I hope you find this useful if your check ride's coming up, and let me know if you have any more questions after. Also, I apologize for the video quality and for my awkwardness because I don't really make YouTube videos and I'm talking to my uh, laptop photo booth, so I keep going in between looking at myself and looking at the camera. Um, I'm not really sure how to do this. Maybe if I make more videos in the future, I'll figure it out, but uh, for now... Okay, so first things first, you gotta get this book. Uh, this really is uh, the best resource, and as you can tell, um, I used it so much that the pages have now been ripped out. But uh, it's simply an amazing book, and uh, if you understand everything that's in here, um, you will do very well on your oral exam. So I walked in the FBO and I met up with the DPE and we kind of um, made small talk for a little bit and then we went right into um, you know proving that the airplane is airworthy and proving that I'm eligible to um, get my private pilot certificate. Huge tip, uh, do not make the oral exam the first time you ever look at your airplane's logbooks. Uh, make sure you're really familiar with that before you go into the oral exam. Um, if you need to, go find an A&P and have him explain stuff with you, you know, ask your CFI, because some of the entries can be, like, a little bit hard to find. Like, I know my annual was really difficult to find for some reason, or it was something like that, but, like, really make sure you can spot all the um, important tests and inspections and um, things like that, you know, the AVA uh, annual VOR, like, like, all that kind of stuff. Like, you want to be able to, like, find that. So it is open book. You can bring any FAA uh, publication, so you can use your FAR AIM, uh, the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge, the FAC, and then you can use the Airplane Flying Handbook, uh, like anything like that um, you can use. Uh, I actually didn't open my FAR AIM or either one of those books once during my oral exam, and that made me feel really good because I didn't have to look anything up. I would recommend tabbing out your FAR AIM. Uh, I was ready to go uh, in case I needed to look something up. I would know where it is. Um, in the beginning of the FAR AIM, there's actually a suggested study list, so it gives you uh, the chapters and pages of both the FAR and the AIM. The AIM is the Aeronautical Information Manual, it's in the back. Go through those, highlight them, tab it just like this, especially be really familiar with Part 91. Like I said, the test is open book and open resource, but that doesn't mean that you should be relying on it as a crutch. It should be like good cross-reference material to something that you're explaining, or if you're explaining a concept and you need a photo, and another thing is that just because it's open uh, book, you know, open POH, doesn't mean that there's some stuff that you shouldn't, like, innately know. Like, V-speeds are super important. You, like, you've got to know your airplane's V-speeds. Like, if you don't know VR and you're at your, <laughs> you're at your oral exam, like, uh, VR, VX, VY, uh, know your, like, max gross weight, know your basic empty weight, um, know how to calculate your weight and balance, know what kind of engine you have, like, know what kind of airplane you have, like, is your Cessna 172 the Mike or the November model? You know, like, uh, there's basic stuff about the plane that you're flying that you really should know. What type of hydraulic flu fluid does your aircraft use and what color is it? And it literally says, like, M-I-L-H-83282. Don't, don't memorize that. Um, I thought I would have to. Don't memorize stuff like that. Like, really long numbers. Don't, don't like work yourself up over that, but definitely know basic stuff about your airplane. So something that my examiner did was he got out a piece of paper and he wrote V, 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 and then, um, you know, and, and continued on, and he wrote VR, and then he asked me, what does that mean? And I said, rotation speed. Then he asked, what is it on your airplane? I said, 60. And then he went to VFE, and he's like, you know, what does it mean? Flaps extension speed. What is it on your airplane? It's 102. And so um, that was one portion that uh, went really well because I had made flashcards. So that's what I'd recommend is make a flashcard uh, deck of everything about your airplane, including your category. So utility, aerobatic, normal, you know, know um, the load factor, know those numbers, like really, really know the specific important numbers about your airplane. Uh, that's what I can recommend. 
the week before I was a nervous mess. Uh, so here's some of my notes uh, that I kind of just had lying out around my room that I would keep uh, referencing. So this is like a little um, thing I made for ATC light gun signals. So it's kind of like, oh, the green, sorry, it's, it's really like crumpled right now, but uh, it's green and you're on the ground and you flip it up. What does it mean? It means you're clear for takeoff, red on the ground, um, stuff like that. I found this really helpful. Okay, so if I have one main takeaway from this entire video, it's this piece of paper. This is a list of everything that I missed on my written exam. And I can tell you uh, that made up like most of the portion of my oral exam was just the material that I missed on my written. And they give you a warning, they will beat that to death. Like everything you missed on your written. Um, I got a 75, so I didn't do that great. Um, I took it a really long time ago. Like I think I took it, oh, I took it so long ago. Just make sure that you know everything you missed and know like, subdivisions of like like no anything that's like related to things you missed because like holy cow he was just going down the list and i was like when is this gonna end the way that you answer questions is going to dictate how your oral exam goes so at some points um i was looking him right in the eye and i would answer the question like that no hesitation you know just straight eye contact and then there was other times when i would kind of have to wander my eyes were like you know on the ceiling my eyes were on the floor because i there, there was some that I really had to rack my brain for, and at that point, he would prolong those sections. The most painful part of my entire oral exam would have to be airspace and the sectional chart. That was like... I know my airspace, uh, I know my cloud clearances, I know my equipment requirements and pilot qualifications and how to enter, and you know, I had all that memorized but I wasn't ready for the way that he asked me. He kind of went and he drew like, uh, I guess this would help if I didn't have my hand, but he drew kind of like little like arrows and he was like, okay, so how is Bravo different from Alpha? And then he would go in and be like, okay, so how are the cloud clearances in Charlie different from Delta? They're not, um, but like, Stuff like that, the way of like relating things and kind of um, comparing the airspaces was a way that I hadn't really thought about. Okay, so let this be a lesson. Please take this into account. Oh my god, bring current charts. Um, bring current materials. I don't know what, I, 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 don't, I, I don't know what I was thinking. I was stressed out, I hadn't really slept, I hadn't really eaten. I brought, um, I brought a non-current chart supplement US. Uh, don't know what I was thinking. Do not do that. Thankfully, I have a subscription to ForeFlight on my uh, iPad that I use for flying. And so I was able to go on there and open the Chart Supplement US on there and say, yes, I do have current um, material because, wow. I thought at that point I was done. I thought I, thought I was out the door at that point because I don't know how I could have been so stupid. Um, I didn't um bring a terminal area chart i didn't have one and i didn't even think about that until the night before so now it's the night before the test and you know of course i'm freaking out because i have to plan my cross country to boeing field uh which is within the SeaTac bravo so now i'm panicking because i don't have a terminal area chart and so i go i go and do this uh i didn't even take this out because after the chart supplement us deal and i was super embarrassed i was like there is no way i'm gonna show him this and i went to a print shop and i printed out <laughs> I printed out a, a terminal area chart this so Boeing field is in a class Bravo and so that uh, unleashes you know its own monster with flight planning look up like if there's any arrival or departure procedures because of course there are for Boeing field and of course I didn't look them up <laughs> so so something uh, that I didn't do that well on was uh, parts of the sectional when we were looking through them the paper chart is not actually like current without the airport facilities directory or chart supplement us i always want to call it the afd it's not current without that so if you don't have a current chart supplement us your paper chart isn't current and airspace changes and obstructions change and you know things about airports change and airports close and so that's why you have the chart supplement us so really use that in pairing with your paper charts. This one question that I got that really threw me off was about this little tiny airport um, that I had actually done a solo cross country to. And so we're looking at this little airport that I've flown into before uh, by myself on the chart, looked at the details on it, and it says RP star. So I definitely, when I had gone in there by myself, had 
definitely flown a left pattern, but on the chart it says RP with a star. And so I look in the um, chart supplement US and I see glider activity and I'm like, oh, it's right traffic for glider activity. I'd seen, you know, the L with the uh, little asterisk on it, not a star, an asterisk is a better word for what I'm trying to say. But, um, and that means, you know, like part-time lighting or like lighting limitations exist. And so anytime you see that little star, um, as I did with the RP with the star, um, know that there's more to the story than meets the eye on the chart and that you should look at the chart slip in the US. A few days before, uh, the night before my check ride, um, filled out a piece of paper with a really good overview and like stuff to keep in mind and like things along the route. And so I started really looking at it and I um, wanted to really know the route. I wanted to know any MOAs, any, you know, like SAFRAs that were on it, any um, TFRs that might pop up. So here is, um, here's my flight plan. Um, I don't know if you can see it very well. Uh, it's very, very detailed, and it took me a long time to do, and it continues onto this page. I mean, it's just like all this stuff. If you want me to send you a photo, like, let me know, and um, I can send a photo. And then there's like this back one, so I've got like the sea weight and balance sheet. I'll show you that in a second. And then I uh, got, I did a weather briefing on a separate page because I type it up because they talk so fast. And then here's the flight plan that I showed him. I wrote down very tiny, the arrival information and uh, frequencies and stuff like that. And in my notes section, I have all my VORs. And so um, what I tried to do when I was planning my route is use a very uh, good variety of different navigational methods. And so he asked me like, how are we gonna be navigating? And I said, I'm gonna use a combination of you know, radio aids, GPS, and of course pilotage. And so he really liked the, I guess, diversity of different methods. He also asked me what my power settings were gonna be and um, fuel burn and time to get there, you know, all like the basic stuff, like what the winds are gonna be doing. And I got um, some pretty important information that I wrote kind of along the top. So I've got like, you know, our route of flight. And then I wrote here that we're going to have a glide ratio or not a glide ratio, but we're going to have a glide distance of 9.7 nautical miles. So I plan this off of a um, established, you know, set of winds and temps. And so it might vary because it was obviously it was a forecast. And so I made sure to print out um, the forecast that I used to plan this so he could cross reference it. So then I've also got up here, um, you know, 75% power is what we're using, best power, you know, uh, leaned, uh, not for best economy. And he asked me, you know, why I'm using that. I'm like, well, because I want to go there, <laughs> I want to get there fast. It's my brother's wedding. And so uh, I've got my RPM down for what that's going to be. So here's a binder that I brought to the oral exam that I organized. So the first tab says, you know, like um, the route to Boeing Field. The second tab says, um, my airplane basically so it's like it's the airplane tail number and that's um kind of all the information about my airplane and then the third tab is weather and then the fourth tab is supplements and then the last tab is acs first tab is the route itself so i've got the weather briefing that i received that morning and i put down what time i got it at and then as you can see if you've ever gotten a weather briefing you understand the chicken scratch because they go fast this is something that i made just in microsoft word just like as a simple table at the bottom i calculated uh my va which is maneuvering speed and so um he really liked liked that when i referenced it so um i've got that our va at our current weight um will be 109 knots so um, he asked about that and that came up. So that's also important to know is your maneuvering speed. So this is really important. I printed out um, from the Aviation Weather Center um, the winds and temps uh, that I used to um, plan the cross country. Here's an enlarged airport diagram that is easily accessible of uh, Boeing Field and then, you know, home airport as well. Um, I actually got this from my friend Abby. I uh, would recommend watching her videos, Veni Vidi Amavi. Uh, she makes awesome flying videos. Uh, I got this from her uh, oral exam video. So it's a uh, personal minimums list. So the next tab in my binder is uh, my airplane's call sign. So this is everything about the airplane that I'm flying. So like I said before, I went into a coffee shop and I enlarged all the charts because they're a lot easier to write on. And 
yeah, more performance charts. Um, this is, you know, I, I just circled how I uh, got the true air speeds. And here's a um, an AD that might be coming out for the PA28181. Um, I haven't really checked on it in a while, so it might be out. I don't know. But um, I just put that in there so that if he asks about ADs, I can, you know, reference it. I made a passenger safe <laughs> safety booklet um, of, like, basic information, and then on the... Uh, back page, there's some tables, come on, about like symptoms and illnesses, hypoxia, you know, like even like anxiety, carbon monoxide poisoning, like everything's in there. Next tab is weather. Um, there's not a lot in here. I've got the Seattle weather just from what, you know, like the weather channel. Um, and I've got current um, winds and temps aloft that I printed out that morning. And then I've got some prog charts. Finally, in the back, um, I just had some like random pieces of paper and then most importantly, um, the ACS. That is a question on the oral exam. He literally asked, are you familiar with the ACS? And I said, yes. And um, I had this highlighted, tabbed out, memorized my tolerances, um, everything. It's all on here. So um, really, really, really familiarize yourself with the ACS. Yeah, watching other people's experiences really helped me. That's why I'm making this video. Um, Jason Shepard um, and then Fly at Mike Alpha really helped. Bold Method is a website that has a lot of quizzes and that really helped me too. Also, um, a channel that I stumbled upon that isn't really like as heavily advertised as like Fly at Mike Alpha and like Jason Shepard is Embry Riddle's videos are really, really helpful. Like, um, it's not even like clearly marked, but I stumbled upon them and they're like, ER, like AU special VFR, or they're, they're, they're called something like that. I'll link it below, but they're really helpful. Like they have some awesome videos on the pedostatic system, on how the altimeter works, and they, they have really good visuals. And so um, this random em Embry-Riddle account that kind of just doesn't really, you know, blatantly advertise uh, is really, really helpful. There's also that old school, um, like I think it's from like the 70s uh, check ride video or like the oral exam video and it's it's really old and a lot of that stuff I actually got asked so um, I watched the whole thing and I would recommend that you do too because I found it very helpful. So that's all I got for today. Uh, let me know if there's anything that I missed or you want me to go over or if you have any more questions in the comments below. Uh, thank you for watching and good luck on all your check rides. So if I could help calm your check ride nerves I'm going to by telling you what happened to me right before my oral exam. So I'm going out and I have to refuel the plane because I didn't have time to do it the day before. So I gave myself plenty of time to get to the airport and fuel up the plane uh, prior to the uh, check ride. And so I'm out there, it's a piper, so it's a low wing. And um, the, the nozzle uh, at the self-serve fuel, like it really gets going if you squeeze it all the way, like that thing really, um, that thing really flies. And so I uh, squeezed it too hard, was just just so nervous, missed, um, missed the fuel hole, bounced off the wing, and guess what? 100 low lead right in my face, like in my mouth, in my eyes, like in my nose, all over my face. And so I um, panicked and dropped the nozzle and I ran to the nearest open hangar and I'm just like help me like I got, I got app gas in my eyes and so this guy um, is just like pouring water down my face my makeup's running I did my makeup all like nice and presentable and my, I wore a nice outfit and you know my shirt is drenched and I am soaking wet coming into my uh, coming into my oral exam so that's how that went so if you think you're nervous you're not